Peter Obi as Umayi's ninth mayor. Ever since Vice President Atiku Abubakar chose Peter Obi as his running mate in the run-up to the 2019 presidential election, Governor Dave Umayi has not been happy with the Labour Party presidential candidate for the 2023 general election. He had claimed he was fighting against the marginalization of the Eboi man in the general scheme of things because both Eboi and Imo states were excluded from the list drawn down by the party for consideration. He did not say Imo states also complained of marginalization. But on Monday, Umayi returned with his marginalization theory, accusing everyone of what he had earlier referred to as the Eboi fear of marginalization in the Southeast. Really? Is this the same Eboin state that produced the first and last governor of eastern Nigeria, Sir Dr. Francis Akunu Ibiam, and produced Dr. Aja Wanchuku as Nigeria's first Republic Minister of Education and a host of other great Eboinians in polity? So what is Umayi talking about? Is it the fear of marginalization that is behind his hatred for Peter Obi? What is lacking in his plethora? Of achievements that Peter Obi is reminding him of. The fact that the Peter Obi brand is Umai's obsession worsened by his lack luster performance in the last APC presidential primaries. Umai went into the APC with the understanding he was being promised he would be Nigeria's next president. The Southeast was okay with that proposition though with an air of trepidation. The sense of hurry with which he stumped stampede himself into the ruling party was alarming. He entertained himself on the beauty of his exit from the opposition party and how PDP marginalized Eboin State at various times in this ongoing political experiment. He has been wooing the All Progressive Congress APC and President Muhammad Buhari despite the fact that he became a governor on the platform of the PDP. In a bid to realize a pet ambition, Omai railed abuses on the PDP, claiming marginalization of a boy in state, and crossed over to the party and reminded it he had seen in a dream he would be the next president of Nigeria. In his first tenure as governor, he campaigned for Buhari's second term bid as president. Obviously, there is something in Omai's DNA that makes him feel taller when he dreams, dreams as Nigeria's next president. After all, his transformation of a boy state to a modern state has been celebrated far and near. A president, David Mayi, would replicate what he did in a boy in the larger Nigeria space. Yet, apart from a few advertorials on television, Umayi did not travel to Bonu State to campaign and tell the people he would make a clean sweep of Boko Haram and turn Sambesa Forest into a Dubai. He did not visit the nearby Abia state to teach the governor the art of governance and promise the indigents he would make their state as good, if not better, than his dear state. He did not proceed to Kaduna state to tell them he would resolve the ethnic religious killings going on in the state. Omai has seen Obi traversing the entire Nigeria space as the arrowhead and avant guard of a new movement with a tremendous following among the youth another age bracket in the country. A new Nigerian movement for positive change is unfolding. What the polity had always wanted and yearned for is a restructured Nigeria without rent seekers, a Nigeria where tribe and tongue do not matter. Nigerians are connecting with the obedient mantra of no more sharing. And the lyrics from the Obi choir are rhythmic and resonating with hope and greatness for the future. Therefore, all this flexing coming from Governor Mai as a shout out to Bola Ahmed Tinubu, an application letter to campaign for him and wait for an appointment in anticipation of victory and payback. Umai never campaigned as a potential flag bearer of the APC. He took so much for granted and felt entitled. He saw Governor Naysom Wike as a Waju Ahmed Tinubu and Vice President Yemi Osibanjo campaigning through the length and breadth of the country. Omai sat like a dummy at the government house at Bakaliki, waiting for an, an Ohaneze endorsement to drop on his laps. Eboin is a PDP state, but ideally, APC delegates in Eboin state should be under him. What he did do for them, he took it for granted that the votes belonged to him. Did he ask what Tinubu did 
for his delegates, including those of Lagos State. Beside, no Igbo man believed Umai was serious when he jumped ship and defected to the APC. Now he says Ebony people are despised by the rest of Indigo. The same Umai who complained Obi was chosen as a vice presidential candidate without his clearance has not gotten over his blues. Seniority no longer counts in Igbo land. Obi had served as governor long before Umai found himself in government house Abakaliki. Why is he quarreling with that? He is jealous and disrespectful of his senior brother who has excelled in the art of governance. We respect Obi for many reasons. As a devout Catholic, he knows the respect the church attaches to the beauty of womanhood. He cannot be charged for domestic violence or physical abuse of the women folk. He does not beat his wife. This and many other reasons explain why the women are rushing to be registered as crusaders of Obinomics in the change national movement led by Obi. Here is Dave Umayi talking about Ebony voting for Asiwajo Ahmed Bola Tinubu. Not for Obi. Nobody is quarreling with that. What is an issue is making it look like we would ensure anyone runs counter to the decree of Emperor Dave Umayi will be stoned to death. Umayi is disrespectful of those who have occupied government house Abakaliki before him. Umayi forgot that. Under the PDP, Ayim, Ayim Pius Ayim was a one-time Senate president. Ayim is a proud Igbo man from Ebony State who again became the number four under President Goodluck Ibele Jonathan, serving as secretary to the government of the Federation SGF. He did not get the job by blackmailing or threatening his kinsmen. The presidential aspirant in the just-concluded PDP election did not hound Ohaneze for losing the flag or ticket. If Omai wants to invite President Buhari to Ebony State for a third time, he stands to lose nothing. Buhari's aura and tall image which complements his make the governor glow in glory. Such visit will be a parting gift that will help stoke his ambition as a future president of Nigeria. Until that happens, Omai by his action has only succeeded in telling Nigerians he is about to become jobless. Uonsu was former GMD of leadership newspaper. Peter Obi, as Umayi's ninth mayor, Onduka Wonsu, writes that Dave Umayi's verbal outburst is unfortunate.